Hey, everybody. Welcome to Binge Mode. This is a special podcast where we dive deep into past messages from Grace Community Church. We'll be talking with guests, exploring spiritual living, and talk about what it looks like to live out our faith in practical ways. We aren't trying to preach these great messages over again. Instead, we are going to go deep into the truths found there. So welcome to Binge Mode. If you haven't listened to Throwback Thursday's message from Thursday night, consider yourself a disadvantaged human being. But you don't have to have heard it to follow along with us today. So listen in. Hey, every Thursday at graceoc.com slash online, you can experience past messages with us live along with others. It's a really awesome thing that we're trying to do every Thursday coming forward here. And right now we're going through the series Anxious for Nothing. Anxious for Nothing is a five-week series with Pastor Jared, and he did this back in January of 2018. So for the next five weeks, we'll be diving deep into Philippians 4, where Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. We'll be talking about how that is even possible and how we can have the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. So this week on the show, we've got Pastor Corey Deck. He's the lead pastor at our Newburgh campus. He's also helping to lead out our church online campus as well. So Corey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. We are really glad to have you on here, Corey, and you've been doing a great job with Church Online. And uh, I also know that you have some great stuff to say, some response to the message this week. And Tyler, do you mind if I just jump right in? Yeah, let's do it, man. With kind of takeaways? Awesome. Okay. I've been looking forward to this. So at the very front end of the message, if you got to listen to it, awesome. Uh, You know that Pastor Jared started talking about the three things, the three top things that Americans from 2018, that's, I can't believe that message was that long. (laughs) Yeah, two years old, man. Uh, Yeah, already. So the top three things that Americans from 2018 are anxious about, according to the APA, number one, the future of the country, number two, money, and number three, work, which is, uh, it's almost prophetic. It's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, that really speaks to our time right now. I don't mm-hmm. think that's changed. Yeah, definitely. That's so interesting. You know, I was, um, when we said we were going to do this series to start off, I, this was the first series I was at Grace for. And really? I specifically remember these three things being talked about and mm-hmm. thinking, I wonder if these will be the things we worry about for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. And then... I, I, I anticipate that they will be, you know, I don't, I don't know. If, well, I don't know how things will change coming out of this virus, but. Right. Yeah. I'm sure nothing will ever be the same again after this, but these three particular things, there's at least right now, they're still the things that we're anxious about that people are getting anxious over. And the way that pastor Jared had said it is that anxiety won't go away in this life but we can have more and more victory over it. Almost like I got this image in my own head of we can gain ground that anxiety has taken from us. Yeah, I love how he said anxiety is just a part of life. And that's such a like, I don't know, it's freeing and um, discouraging Mm -hmm. at the same time. Like in one (laughs) one part, it's discouraging because you're like, oh, this is is like never going to go away. Uh, But at Mm -hmm. the same time, it is freeing because... I think that it make it normalizes it. You know, we tend to feel like, mm-hmm. man, am I the only one that, you know, feels mm-hmm. this way? And, and I was like digging in and thinking about anxiety and it like, it's that feeling of, uh, you know, when you get a pit in your stomach and you mm, just yes. feel uneasy, right? Or like, <laughs> I actually, this experience happened to me last night. I'm like staying up late and like my mind is running and I can't yeah. get to sleep. And Man, I don't know about you guys, but I've like I felt that way so many times throughout my life. Um, yes, I, I get it right <laughs> in my sternum. Yes. I feel it like oh. I just want to get it out. Oh. And, and for some other reason, I feel it in my hands. I end up kind of like my hands. I put them together, and I kind of uh, I don't know. I massage my own hands with my. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, does that I even help? Get this, <laughs> it does, doesn't does help. help. <laughs> yeah. No, you can only crack your knuckles so many times. Yeah, for real. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> really do anything. I also get the heart racing. Um, Mm. the, I don't know, sometimes I even get migraines. Um, like I'll lay down and I can see my heart like pumping out of my chest and, and my wife will be like, did you like go for a run or something? And I'm like, no, I'm just really stressed right now. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Mine was this morning. I, I, every day the past few weeks or past few days, I mean, sorry, I've been waking up with like a stomach ache and I'm like, I don't know if I'm getting sick or if I'm just like, I, I get up and I start to go about my day realizing that everything is so different right now. Mm. 
And I think my body is just genuine. Like I get the anxiety in my sternum too, but it's lately it's been different. So it's, it's interesting to hear us even all talk about that. I imagine we're not, I mean, I'm sure, I know we're not the only ones. So I appreciate right. that pastor Jared gave us that permission even yeah. to yes. just recognize this is a part of our life. Yeah. Um, but I, I was curious, like uh, something that we did, I did this morning, cause this has been happening for the past few days since I've been home. And, um, I'm curious what, what are you guys doing to like kind of step through that step over it? Cause this morning I just, I got up and I was like, you know what? I've got three meetings and 25 emails, but <laughs> I'm going to go like roll around with my kids for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to go run in the snow. Cause why is it snowing on the first day of spring? <laughs> what the heck is going on? Um, but you know, we've got like, a, and it just at five minutes, I still have a stomach ache, but I feel yeah. like I'm not crippled, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, the first thing that, that I thought of when I was, you know, starting to think through this is that you, you shouldn't try to fight it. <clears throat> Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. feelings are feelings. They, they aren't controllable as much as I'd love them to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, in fact, like I remember way back when I was in a, a course on counseling and they would say, in the course, and I still remember to this day, like feelings are sort of the the warning light on your dashboard of your life. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you don't necessarily know um, what the problem is, but the feelings that you feel, whether it's anxiety or fear um, or anger, whatever the feeling is, but you know, in this case, we're thinking anxiety. That's that's God being like warning, warning. You know, the Holy Spirit saying there's something yes. going on behind this, um, and so I always try to when I'm feeling that way, when, you know, I get the pit in my stomach or whatever, I try to take a step back and sort of disconnect from the moment and say like, what is happening here? Like, why am I feeling this way? And instead of just moving like on past it, ignoring it, which is sometimes what we do. Yes. That's, that's where my mind goes is I, I want to see the the thing behind the thing. What is causing this? Mm-hmm. Where is this coming from, so to speak? And I end up wanting to think that Okay, whether it's one of those three things that we had mentioned of, you know, the country, money, work, whether it's those things, uh, I want it to be that because uh, I'm thinking about those things, I'm anxious about those things because it's going to affect my family. But I think deep down, often it's because these things end up affecting my self-worth or Mm. what are people going to think of me? Uh, Mm. Like it's it's much more selfish and self-preservation-y. It comes more from that kind of place than it does one of how is this going to impact my my family. But Corey, I think you asked a really good question of what do you do to engage it? What do you do when you have these emotions, you got the pain in the stomach or the chest, or you're stuck there rubbing your hands like I do. Uh, <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think one of the things that I, I do is I give my hands something to do. Personally, mm, I, yeah. I end up trying to That's go good. and my go-to is the heavy bag. I mm. work out and just not even anything crazy. I just try to uh, get not, not distract myself necessarily, but the it's it's almost like it gives part of my brain an opportunity to think through these things uh, while my hands are busy working out. And also, yep. just like you said, just rolling around with your kids and instead of sitting there, just rubbing my hands and almost paralyzing myself mm. uh, in that moment. I think it's good. to. I, I always try to like what and I think maybe Pastor Jared touched on it, like the splitting of your mind thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And I, I don't remember how he framed it. So maybe you could set that up because in my mind, it's like I split my mind <laughs> when I when I get anxious, I split my mind so that I can like take ground back from the anxiety. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. The way Pastor Jared had talked about it was uh, it's like our mind is a uh, a log and anxiety. It means to have a, your mind is splintering or splitting. It's almost like anxiety is an ax that's coming down and splitting your mind into two different thoughts, like you're being mm. torn apart. And uh, mm. and he, he, he got into this. He had this really great, great quote about how it's... Um, we end up thinking that anxiety is robbing us of our joy, but anxiety does not rob your joy. It is robbed joy that creates anxiety. Almost like it creates a space for it to come into. It has to be filled with Mm. something. So whether it's joy Mm. or anxiety, our go-to is anxiety. And I was thinking about it in terms of my marriage because we are, um, Michelle and I are, we probably only see each other every night, maybe like between two to four hours. 
Mm -hmm. um, just after we're both home and everything. And because we both work, Michelle's a mechanical engineer and she's works crazy hours too. So, and we're wondering like, how are we going to do with this increased amount of uh, <laughs> proximity, yeah. just the amount of time yeah. that we're spending together the way, how are, we've never had to do that. And you know what, I'll say it this way, is the first couple of days, even when we go on vacations together, is always a little interesting. But I was thinking is already my mind is slipping to this place where I know that the quickest way to destroy a gift is to compare it to something else. I know. So if anxiety doesn't rob us of our joy, I think comparison does. Mm. Uh, so before my marriage has even been affected by this, because she's still going to work, she's still working, she's in manufacturing, so she's able to work. I'm comparing the potential damage that's done from stress and prolonged proximity mm. to the way things were in the past and how they used to be good, the good old days. And, and that is going to rob me of joy. Yeah, absolutely. And I wrote, I wrote this question down um, after that point, because that was such a good point that, that Pastor Jared made. I said, what are the situations that I'm blaming for, for my anxiety? And it's so easy. Um, you know, I, I talked about this earlier, but like when I do take that step back and I start to like dig and say, okay, what's going on here? it's very easy then to fill that answer in with, oh, it's the situation that's happening to me. Mm. It's mm. the sickness mm. that's going on in my life. It's the fact that I'm worried about paying my bills next month. Um, it's the way that that person treated me and there might be like conflict going on here. And so it's easy for me to say, the situation is the problem. That's why I'm anxious. That's why I'm feeling that way. Um, and so I, I, I felt like um, when Paul says, hey, rejoice in the Lord always. Pastor Jared said this in the message too, when he was addressing, he's like, your joy can't be found in your circumstances. Yeah. And that hit me like mm -hmm. a two by four. Like, cause that's where I always go is I'm trying to find joy in my circumstances. I'm trying to, my, I want my life to be easy. You know, all of those kinds of things. <laughs> And so the first thing that I default to is like, oh, it's, it's my circumstances. Like if I just had enough money, uh, if my health was perfect, yeah. uh, if everyone in my life just treated me with kindness. <laughs> yes. You know Every what I'm saying? I, when, I, when I read that phrase, rejoice in the Lord, and I don't know if you guys sometimes cop an attitude with the Bible, but like every time mm -hmm. I read that phrase, yes. I get like, I feel yeah. like it brings yeah. out something nasty in me <laughs> yeah. where I'm like, Rejoice in the Lord always. What an arrogant, privileged writer this guy must be. <laughs> like, uh, like he must know, have the easiest life ever. <laughs> and I, right. I try to, I try to engage the Bible like that with, like, with all of myself, not just the Christian part, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and every time I read, there's a, there's a few passages like this in the Bible that just like irritate me. But it's like it's one of the reasons I like that we're talking about this message because I think. The idea, uh, it, it irritates me for a few reasons. Like I, I know people who are like, they use the rejoice in the Lord always line to escape from confronting the actual issues. Mm. And that really bothers me because I feel like I wish I could escape like that. Like yeah. I wish I could just say rejoice and then actually like feel fine, but I can't. Like I, I, I feel like really, I, think I feel that's a, a lot of weight around it. Corey, I think that's a great point. I'd love to dig in a little bit more. Like, what do you mean when you say they use it to escape? Like, how do you see people using that to try to escape? Um, you know, I, I don't know if this is the same for uh, you, Jake, but like, I feel like I have a lot of conversations uh, with folks around our campus or uh, in our community. And I know that there's stuff going on in every one of our lives. And then I want to like, I want to engage that with folks. I think that's mm -hmm. part of the best. It's some, one of the best things that I get to do in my role is to just kind of like be with people in those things mm -hmm. because we're not alone. We, we are all experiencing this kind of, whether it's yeah. anxiety, like that's the topic for today, but pride, uh, fear, mm -hmm. stress, um, you know, internal sin, external sin, like there's all kind of stuff that we're all facing. And there's a couple of really like, powerful lines in the Bible, like rejoice in the Lord always. And what that really carries as an implication for our lives as like a great like tool and launching point for handling stress and anxiety. But we often will take that. And because it is so powerful, a lot of times it doesn't require like step two, three, four, five. It just like, it sounds like step one has all the answers. <laughs> 
And, and I, I, and I appreciate that. And I think it's a good, it's not a bad place to start, but I think a lot of times we just say and leave it there mm. instead of like going all the way with, with what, what the implications of what Paul is writing really is, what, what that really means. And that, um, our joy can't be found in circumstances. And in fact, our joy oftentimes will, will be something we have to search for in our circumstances. It'll be something that we'll have to like work really hard at. We'll have to overcome anxiety mm. to find the joy. And I think sometimes we just assume, well, if I'm anxious, then I can't have joy. And I, and mm. that's, so that's kind of what I was mm. getting at. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes was, we use okay. that to, you know, sort of club other people over the head, kind of like, oh, yes. well, yes. I'm more Get spiritual than you because I'm having joy right now in my life and <laughs> you are not. <laughs> so your problem is you just need to rejoice in the Lord. Yes. As it, I, and I think it's, um, it's, a. Uh, it's a description of how we ought to act. Right. But it's, it's got some prescriptive like truth in it for us. But when we start prescribing for others, the way they have to, the way that they must rejoice and find joy, I think that's where we've like crossed a little bit of a line. Like, I don't think Jesus is super happy when we do that. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Well, you brought up a great point how as you're just even just walking around on a Sunday, there's a lot of or just during Saturdays, you still got, you guys have Saturday services, but uh, you kind of engage with these different people and they'll say these things and you kind of sometimes, you know, it's, you know, it's, you kind of just know it when you hear it and yeah. you know when people are being trite and you know when it's, oh, I know what they're going through right now or I don't even know what they're going through, but I know that it's when they're saying rejoice in the Lord. I, I just have a sense that it's, that it's real. Do you know what I'm talking about mm. uh, with that person? Because, and I feel like it's not just our job as pastors. That's not even what I mean. I mean, as like somebody who loves them enough to tell them the truth, to cut yes. through that and yes. challenge them on that. Are you using that as a band aid right now? Uh, mm-hmm. Are you, are you saying it in a, a trite way just because you don't feel like dealing with the circumstances? Mm. And one of the passages that pastor Jared brought up was Psalm 94 verse 19. And he said, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation uh, brought me joy. Mm. So this, he used the word, uh, Pastor Jared used the word um, marinate on scripture. And I literally <laughs> was thinking of like marinade, like you almost like you put meat in a bag and yeah. like you don't just put it in there yeah. for five seconds. Mm-hmm. It's like it's in there for a while. Hours. Hours, yes. right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, if you do it. So, yeah. yes, what you just said, Jake, it, it, like the, your consolation brought me joy. I think that's so often like one of the ways I get, I I, I feel sad when I hear like, and, and, and they were taking kind of like a tone on like people who say this. And so I don't want it to be like a sweeping statement, but anytime I see people or, and this is just probably a great step for all of us is like the consolation uh, being that like that which brings us joy i think we as the church get to be a part of that for each other right it's yeah, uh i definitely. think it's it's an it's an action it's a it's a um it's a thing that we must do and and when anxiety is great within uh others and ourselves i think we all get to be part of that consolation process so so i think when i hear things and i'm like i know you're deflecting i know you're running mm-hmm. from this can, Good can word. we just like, yeah. can I, can I be consolation to you? Because I know in two or three days, I'm going to want consolation from you. I, I'm going to want us to be in this, you know, together. And I think that's one of the things I like, I'm like, oh man, I wish we could stop with the churchified stuff to mm-hmm. just like be in it with each other. <laughs> yeah. That's such a good way to say it, man. Yeah. And so even for yourself, what are you doing? To, so one of the pieces of like the marination, marinating, I guess, is uh, I, I kind of want to just ask you the open ended question of like, what are you doing? Or can you give us some ideas of how to marinate uh, on scripture? Or I'm even thinking about it outside of um, like almost how can we be applying scripture in this time? How can we lead ourselves in this time? I want to just kind of ask you that open ended question. So question being like, how am I meriting a scripture? How am I, in, in especially like contextually in this time? Is that what you're in asking? In this time, yeah. Uh, and not just you, but for, for anybody. I think there's a couple, I mean, and a lot of this is like rhythms for people's lives. So I think it kind of like, for me, it takes a tone because I'm working at home, but um, we love to hike. We love to be outside, all those things. So for me, it's it's like finding the time when, 
I could be absolutely like I could pick up another content. I could pick up another mm, show to binge. Yes. Um, I could pick up another thing. And there's not a lot wrong with that. I don't I I, I will. I have watched a lot of Disney Plus in the past week. <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie. This show is not sponsored uh, not by Disney sponsor. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, because but <clears throat> part of that for me is that I really like watching the movies that I grew up on with my kids. Like it's really fun. We watched Space Jam mm. last night with Paxton nice. and it was like <laughs> such a joy to watch him like <laughs> his mind could not process Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny <laughs> on the same screen. It was great. That's great. And mm. and so it's like there's there's one of those like uh, we I had j- consolation with my family. Like there was joy there because Sarah and I had talked about what like a weird couple days it had been and so there's that right but then there's also like we're trying to make as many moments out of this as possible and i know that that's really and it's really hard for us and our situations are not nearly as difficult as i know a lot of the people even in our church congregation are right now but um making making some time and and really looking for and also just challenge like looking for those opportunities to where like where instead of picking up another thing can i pick up scripture can Mm -hmm. i pick up some peace. Yeah. Um, you know, I think marinate goes even deeper than that though. Cause like a lot of times when we think marinate, uh, or at least I do, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I think, Oh, like I, I need to read my Bible more. I, you know, I need mm. another sermon podcast. It's like, I'm, I'm right. adding. And I feel like that's mm. not necessarily, I don't even think that's what pastor Jared was really meaning. I think it was mm-hmm. more like take the scripture that already God has implanted in your heart and let it take roots in your life. And I was thinking about Matthew 7, um, 24 to 27, where there's two guys and one builds his house on the sand and the other on rock. I think a lot of us are familiar with that passage. And, you know, Jesus says, hey, the difference is not in the trials. Like in those situations, both both cases, like the rains come and they come down and they like batter the house. And I love that because it's like, hey, whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to have trials. You're going to have like tribulations. We're all... Hey, look, like we're all in this pandemic together, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but the difference is it, taking the word of Jesus and, but he doesn't just say, listen to my words. He says, listen to it and obey it. And so I was thinking yeah. about that marinade idea. And it's like, not just, oh, I heard God's word. I like check my box of, I got my sermon from Pastor Jared yep. or yep. whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm now I'm like actually thinking about and meditating on, if I could use that word, like, what does that actually look like in my life as I'm like going about my day, as I'm interacting with my mm. wife and my kids and my coworkers and, and letting the spirit sort of be like, oh, it, see, that's how it comes out right there and how you just spoke to that person. Or it comes yeah. out right here in how you should be like witnessing to this person that I just brought in your path. And instead you like walked away. So I, I always think about med, you know, meditating, marinating is more like not I need to get more word, word of God in my life. Cause yep. that can tend to be legalistic, but more of like, I need to think more about, well, how is, should this be affecting my like actual walk? That's so good. I yeah. think of it like, um, like ruthless self-awareness, mm. you know, like, that's um, a great like, statement. Yeah. Be, because it, it's, you know, back to the top of the, the conversation when we talked about anxiety is what fills the, the robbed joy in, in what you're describing. And like, if you're being really aware of where it is that joy is leaving, Mm. like, um, I found a lot of joy in going to the office, um, and making coffee and hanging out with our staff and, and getting to do work in, in the church with the church. So I'm struggling right now because I don't have that. Like, that's one of the areas I recognize that joy is not present in the same way it used to be. So I could allow that gap Mm. to become filled with anxiety and worry. And I, it has started there, but even in this conversation, I'm thinking, Oh man, I've got to be more aware of this. I've got to go ask for some extra accountability and feedback because I I know there's a lot of areas we're just, and not even in a, like a addicted to work kind of way, but just in a rhythm of life way, I got a lot. I, I have been very fulfilled being a pastor at the Newburgh campus. I don't get to see the Newburgh campus for a while. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to move forward and take all those experiences where we had joy and find new rhythms and new ways to, 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 to have a foundation of scripture, like what you were talking about, Tyler, Mm -hmm. and fill them with something other than to not let them not let anxiety or pride or some other sin spot to take that ground. How are we going to even like not even taking new ground right now, just holding the ground that we've already taken, you know? Yeah. Mm. 
towards the end of the sermon, um, you know, Pastor Jerry was talking about how do we make Jesus, and I think this goes along with like what you were just saying, Corey, how do we make Jesus the source and the supply of our joy? And, and I loved how he phrased phrased it that way, source and supply. Those are like two different things. But yeah. I also thought, man, I feel like I hear that a lot and it's almost become a cliche to me. You know what I mean? Because I've mm-hmm. heard that a lot, like make Jesus the source of your joy. I wonder what you guys think, like, what does that actually look like in, you know, in real life? I think part of, um, this is just maybe how I operate. So I, I, I would probably say this is way more descriptive. Right. Um, but I always try to examine like, what, why is it that I'm really doing this and try to get to the source of even what I have been doing? Um, so I think if you can identify and be again, like really self-aware and build that into your relationships and your life and your rhythms, if you can be aware of even the source of the things that you're saying, Mm. I think that's how you figure out, well, is, is that, is the source of this something that's really centered on scripture is really centered on biblical principle. It's really centered on truly just my relationship with Jesus. Is this something that I would feel comfortable, you know, uh, having larger scale conversations with others about, or is this something that like brings me to a place of like selfishness Mm. or shame or anger. And so getting to the source of even some of the things that we do on a daily basis. Um, Because I've had that relationship with work before where I'm like, why do I love going to work so much? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get to the source of this. Because is it, am I like, am I running from something? Am I avoiding something? And, um, and I've had those, you know, it's, it's those kinds of things, getting to the source of why you do what you do. I think gives Jesus the opportunity to be the source of mm. why you do what you do. Yeah. Does that make sense? Definitely. That's so good, man. And I was thinking for me, like I, when I am feeling anxiety, you know, I kind of have like a few go-tos that, that I always go to. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go play like video games for a couple of hours or I'm going to go like take a nap, you know? And I was, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, <laughs> yeah, you I love me there. some naps for real. <laughs> but if Jesus is going to be my source, you know, if I want to phrase it that way, because I, I love phrasing it that way, it's I go to Jesus first before I go to whatever, you know, whatever it is, fill in the, fill in the blank, that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, I, I like just to kind of sew up that point. C.S. Lewis has a great quote, and I think even Pastor Jared used this in the message. That's probably where I got this was uh, he says, I know now, Lord, why you utter no answer. You are yourself the answer. Mm. Amen. That's right. Wow. Amen. Good stuff, guys. Well, Corey, thanks so much for joining us this week. Um, dude, thanks for having me, guys. This was such a blast. Thanks for helping us like dive it deep was. into some of these points. And uh, yeah, it was so awesome. Yeah. This was a Thank lot of you, fun. man. Thanks for bringing the goods. So we hope that something we've discussed here this week can in some way encourage you and move you closer to Jesus. And there's a couple of really important things that we want to share with you here at the end of the show. First, is to let you know about Church Online. We are doing Church Online every weekend and you can join us by going to graceoc.com slash online. And we even created a really special Facebook group just for Church Online so that you can experience community, encouragement, and connect with other members of the Grace family online. Anyone can join. So just go to graceoc.com slash FB. So next week, we'll be covering week two of Anxious for Nothing. And Pastor Jared will be talking about rejoicing even though. So So, rejoice even though, fill in the blank. That's right. Fill in the blank for yourself. What is it that wants to challenge us not to rejoice, but we still rejoice even though? What is that for you? So we'll be talking through that. Uh, So if you want to experience the sermon with us before listening to the show, join us for Throwback Thursdays with Church Online at 7 p.m. You can watch the sermon live chat uh, and with the Grace family and even get live prayer. Tyler and I might even be there. So thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for listening in to Binge Mode.